my name is Jace Wolf. Uh, I'm an audiologist. I'm the director of audiology and research at the Hearts for Hearing Foundation in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. When I think about the benefits of early implantation, I've always thought about it uh, from the standpoint of auditory brain development. We have to get in early and form all these neural synapses and these neural networks that are really necessary for a child to optimize their auditory brain development and their outcomes. Um, but what Jamie Lee and colleagues showed is that when we wait um, to implant a child, basically what we do is we allow a delay to occur. They only make about three months of progress for every one calendar year uh, during that time period in which they don't have a cochlear implant. So if we wait and implant at 12 months of age, um, they have the speech and language abilities of a three month old. And so there's a nine month uh, delay that exists. If we wait um, and implant at 18 months of age, then they're gonna have the speech and language abilities of potentially a, a six month old or a five month old. Two years of age, again, probably around six months or so. Um, and so we allow this delay to exist and once they get a cochlear implant, they will hopefully and, and, and typically make one year of language progress in a calendar year, but that delay that exists at the time of implantation persists, unfortunately. So the, their conclusion was, why wait? Why allow for this delay to, to develop in the first place? Let's arrest that delay. Um, their conclusion was, how early should we implant? Implant as early as possible. Another thing that was interesting about that study for years, as long as I've been um, working with individuals with cochlear implants, um, every study that you read, they talk about the variability in outcomes of individuals with cochlear implants, implying that there are, are many people who are star performers, they have excellent outcomes, and then there are also many people who, who don't have good outcomes. Um, and, and why is that the case? And in many of these studies that you will read over the years, they'll examine factors that influence outcomes, and they might say, you know, this factor contributes to 10% of the variability that we see in outcomes, or 5%. In this Lee study that was published in 2016, age of implantation accounted for 67% of the variance or the variability in outcomes of children with hearing loss, which tells us is that all we really need to do is do what we know it takes to achieve excellent outcomes. And that's getting in early, um, providing a cochlear implant at a point in time prior to there ever being a delay, making sure that cochlear implant is programmed effectively so the child has full access to all the different speech sounds and important environmental sounds in his or her environment, and then supporting the family to make sure that the child uses the cochlear implants during all waking hours and that the child has access to a robust model, um, language-rich model, or uh, a language-rich listening environment. And if we can do those things, we shouldn't hope that children make typical progress or age-appropriate speech and language development, we should fully expect that they make age-appropriate uh, speech and language process, progress, excuse me. We're not hoping that it's possible. We really know that it's probable when we do those things.